Hello, and thank you for joining me for the Gnome for Christmas card workshop. I look forward to making a dozen cards with you together today. I am Trisha Morris right here at Club Scrap, and we are going to get started by just selecting the papers that came in your Gnome for Christmas card kit. We'll put all the papers into the order that we'll be using them to make things easier down the road. So just grab the entire stack of papers out of your kit and uh, let's just go ahead and start finding uh, what we need here. We're gonna start out with a sheet of this ivory. You'll notice right away it has a beautiful felt finish and it's nice, heavy, sturdy paper, perfect for card making. Then grab one green and then one sheet of rose and then one print. And when you find that print, just take it off the top and put it face down. I'm putting all these papers on my trimmer base here for safekeeping. Then grab the next ivory the next brown, a rose, and a print. Again, face down on that print. Then a green, a brown, and a rose. Finally, we'll get to our cut aparts. First, find the sheet that has all the rectangles that say, may the simple joys of Christmas warm your heart. Put that face down, followed by this other cut apart that has that open space that's intentionally created that way. So put that face down as well. And then flip the entire stack back over to that ivory, which is where we started. We'll begin with our Fiskars trimmer here and an accordion pocket file to stay organized. We'll be placing pieces into one of four pockets, uh, A, B, and C for the different card sets or styles, and then D will contain any scraps that you can then incorporate into your cards as you see fit, and then anything left over after that can go in the circular file. I'll take the lip of my accordion pocket file and place it under my trimmer base. I also have some hook and loop tape to kind of hold it there. Although the trimmer does a pretty good job of holding it up. If you don't have that, no worries. Just maintain four piles, A, B, C, and D. It'll just require a little bit more working space than I've got here in front of me. So here we go. I'm going to take this ivory paper off the top of the stack and determine the green direction. It's important because we're going to be folding this paper down the road and I want to make sure it folds easily in the future. So hold that paper by an edge. Do you see how stiff this paper is? If I try to wiggle it, look what it does. Now if I rotate the paper so I'm on a neighboring edge, do you see how floppy that paper is? I want this paper to be placed into the trimmer so it flops easily from the top to the bottom of the trimmer. So drop it in that way. And then we're gonna test the green paper in the same way. That feels pretty stiff to me and that feels pretty floppy. So I want it flopping easily from the top to the bottom. Stack those two papers neatly together. We'll trim at the same time. If you don't feel confident with that, don't worry. Just do one sheet at a time and then repeat the instructions. Let's start out by trimming this paper at six and a quarter. So you see that I lifted the blade all the way up and then I'll find the whole number six, make sure it's inches and not centimeters, which are over here, I want inches, so six. To find six and a quarter, you'll go to the left one column, see the, that grid here, one of those columns to find six and a quarter. If there is a common mistake, it would be that someone would go to the right instead, you need to go to the left to make the number bigger. Once you find six and a quarter, make sure you stabilize firmly on this bar because we are trimming two sheets at a time. Bring the blade all the way down and then rotate the piece that you just made and trim it at nine. These two pieces will become card bases in the future. And again, they're gonna be folded this way and that's why we did the grain direction that way. I did a little planning ahead for you. Set these aside uh, to be scored later and then pick up the rectangle that fell. Let's go ahead and trim this at six inches and place the panels in pocket B. And you did create two little scraps during the process. Set those aside, you can, those, those are pretty small. <laughs> I won't save those. Now we're gonna cut the next strip that fell to the right of the blade that we're gonna cut in half at six. Take the piece that's in the trimmer and rotate it and cut at four. So you just made a four by six, right? I'm gonna take the larger panel here and put it in pocket B. And then there's a skinnier strip that fell. We'll place that in A. Now this piece that fell that remains here, we're gonna pick it up and rotate it so that it's five and three quarter on this side, okay? 
six inches long. We'll cut at four and a quarter. Put both of the pieces you created in pocket A. I'm going to do that all one more time with you because we get to do that with two additional sheets. So I'll check this rose paper again and make sure it flops easily from top to bottom. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the print. Now, if you're having a hard time determining, give it a push. If you push, like this is pretty easy to push. This is harder, I can feel more resistance. So I remember I want it dipping top to bottom. I like these all over prints because it doesn't really matter. The direction of the art doesn't really matter. It's just a nice, nice all over wallpapery style or wrapping paper style. All right, now let's find six and a quarter again. Stabilize firmly for those two sheets. Stabilize for every cut you make. Rotate and trim at nine. Remember these two become cards. So I'm gonna set that aside in a scoring pile here and pick up the rectangle that fell and trim again at six. And this piece will go in pocket B. Once again, we have our two little tiny pieces. Those you can dispose of. Now pick up the next strip here. We'll cut it in half at six inches. Rotate the one that's in the base right now, one turn, and then cut at four. This larger piece in your trimmer base, pocket B, and then the other piece in A. Now this next one, we're gonna rotate that one too, so when you put it in the trimmer, it should say five and three quarters on your size here. This time cut at four and a quarter. Pocket A for both the larger and smaller panels again. We get to do another set of instructions that has will repeat for four sheets of paper. So we'll do two rounds with two sheets each. Again, starting with the ivory, we'll check our grain direction and we want the same thing. We want the paper dipping easily from top to bottom. And then with the brown, same thing. I need to have it rotated so it pushes easily this way. Drop it in. Totally different formula this time. We'll start out by trimming at 11. And then six and a quarter. Stabilize firmly. These two pieces that you just made in the base of your trimmer, those are gonna become card bases. So once again, set them aside to be scored and then pick up the other piece. We'll trim horizontally here at 11. Eight and a half. Five and three quarters. And three. Okay, this piece that just was in the base of your trimmer now, pocket B. The next pair, so the one brown, one white, pocket C. And the next pair, one brown, one white, we're gonna trim at four and a quarter. Pocket C for the larger piece, and remember you had two little ends fall off. There should be one more pair of a larger size that's gonna be trimmed horizontally at four. Pocket C again and you had just some little pieces that fell off the end. You can get rid of both of these. And this larger strip, if you want, put that in pocket D. Remember I mentioned pocket D is for like decorating potential. Like if you wanna add a strip to something, then that's there for you. We get to repeat that. Okay, so you're putting all this hard work in up front. Check your grain direction on the rows, grain direction on the print, flopping easily from top to bottom. Stack and we'll cut at 11. Then slide down to six and a quarter. Stabilize. And then this piece, you, you can just set it aside because it's going to become a card base and it needs to be scored. Then grab the next pair, the larger piece. We have all those cuts to make on this. So just bear with me. We'll start at 11. Eight and a half. Five and three quarters. And three. 
So this piece that landed in or ended up in your trimmer base, pocket B. The next pairing of print and rose, C. The next set will trim at four and a quarter. Pocket C. The next pair will trim horizontally at four. Pocket C. I'm just going to quick show you what we did here. I think this will work. We just made these cuts to create some nesting options. So do you see how that nests and this, we can switch it around and that nests. So again, that's the math or the, the planning that goes into all of this, just helps you down the road with assembling your cards. Then finally you have like these tiny scraps and then the strip I'll keep in pocket D. So moving on to page two now of our instructions, we're gonna do one more double. That means we'll cut the next two sheets at the same time because it's the same formula, okay? So we're gonna push and we want it dipping easily again, top to bottom. It's not always like that, but in this case, in my planning, yes, that's what we need, okay? They both dip top to bottom. First cut will be at nine. Oh, a nice whole number for you here. Stabilize firmly. And then four and a half. Rotate and cut at nine and a quarter. So remember, go left one column from the nine. Okay, this piece becomes a card. So set it aside to be scored. The little end cut, pocket B. Pick up the next pair, one green, one brown. We're gonna repeat that, just trim at nine and a quarter. Set aside to be scored. Pocket B again. The strip now, we're gonna cut at six inches. These need to be scored. They're gonna be flaps on one of our card sets. So put those in that scoring pile. Enter the rows. Now, we're not going to talk about grain direction here because this paper is never going to be folded. No worries on the grain. Let's begin way over here at 11 and 3 quarters. That's a quarter of an inch from the 12. So just remember, it's going to be, we're making a pretty tiny little strip here. Then trim at 8 and a half. And 4 and a quarter. Rotate and trim at six. Gather up the two pieces you made, pocket C. And then the next strip, again at six. Gather them up, join their friends in pocket C. This is a little different, but not difficult. We'll trim at 10 and five. Gather these up, pocket A. And you have a little scrap here. You can put that in D along with this strip in pocket D. That's all of the plain paper for now. We have a little bit of trimming left to do on our cut aparts. We always have to start by just taking off the outer perimeter of the paper to create the perfect 12 by 12. We have some printed guidelines here on the corner. Do you see that plus sign? Everything past it needs to go, okay? And that will make our 12 by 12. The reason I have you do this is because those commercial machines just sometimes slip a little, so it's better if you do that final trim. Now when I make my first cut, I usually go pretty generous. Do you see how I still have a little paper beyond the line? I do that so that when I make my rotation, I can see a little better the edge of the blade, my silver blade on my trimmer. I can see it better both at the top and the bottom corner. Just line it up, give it a slice. Then you rotate, now you can see very, very well. Rotate again, this time I should be able to look at my 12 on the left and that should line me up pretty close on the right. And then rotate one last time and I should again be able to go to 12 and take off a hair and now I'll get rid of all these pieces. I have this paper positioned the way I want it to be when I cut it. So that's just, the text should just read right side up. There should be a row of three gifts at the bottom center. And our first cut here now will be at nine and a quarter. And then four and three quarters. Rotate the piece in the trimmer base. And do you see the stars here? Those should be on your right. We'll cut at 11. 
eight and a quarter, five and a half, and two and three quarters. You can gather up all the four pieces that are the same size. Those go in pocket C. And then there is a little star edge here. You can throw that in D for your optional decor. Now pick up the next strip. The gifts should be on the right. We'll cut at 10, seven and a half, five, and two and a half. Gather up these pieces. There's going to be a little <laughs> a pile of gifts there, but the other three that have sentiments, those go in pocket C, and we'll use the gifts in B. If you want, we can separate them just so that they're ready to go. Later on, you can go in and uh, fussy cut them, but for now, we'll just trim them, but they're all gonna go in, in B. One more strip here. We're gonna cut on all whole numbers here. We've got nine, six, and three. Gather these up and place in pocket B. B as in boy. All right, we get to do that perimeter cut one more time. Now remember, just follow those guidelines. This little strip here ends up being a scrap, but I really want you to start everything out with a 12 by 12, okay? So just know that that red stripe on the end is going to be removed, but it needs to be there so we can just have our 12 by 12. My designer, Jacqueline Carney, is so good at helping lay all this out for me. I give her the maps and the text suggestions and ideas, and she runs with it and makes all the beautiful artwork to make it uh, fit perfectly. Okay, so get rid of those little end cuts and make sure it's positioned so that the text is right side up and we need to get off that scrap. So we'll, we'll trim at 11 and three quarters and then slide down to seven and four. Now rotate so that the well is on the right and let's cut at 10 and a half. Nine, six and three quarters, four and a half, two and a quarter. I told Jacqueline all I really wanted was a panel that had a gentle pattern, and lo and behold, we have this cute little snowflake pattern on these papers uh, that goes in pocket B. Then we have these little pieces that fall off the end. We're gonna trim those at two and three quarters and one and a half. Now, it's kind of hard here, but you've got this little clear bar. That's what holds everything in place. Now use the next one to shove that out and do the same thing, two and three quarters and one and a half. You can just scoot that out of there. And all of this goes in pocket B, all of them. The next strip, we got some nice easy cuts here. Nine, six, and three. So we're basically creating three inch squares. Nine, six, three. Pile those into pocket A. Then the next one, again, same thing. Nine, six, and three. Pocket A. You've got your little strip. We'll put that in D. Now, before you put your trimmer away, we have one more piece I'd like you to cut, and that's going to be this crinkle paper. So place it vertically into your trimmer so that, in other words, the width should be around five and a half. And um, so, like portrait style, and we'll cut at four and a half. So we're just going to take a little bit off the end, and then down to two and a quarter. Now rotate this piece so it's horizontal. And if you just wanna double check that it's coming in at seven and a half, it might be just slightly larger than seven and a half. So just to make sure, and then go down to three and three quarters. That gives you these two rectangles. You can place them in pocket C. You can double check this one as well. Seven and a half. Yeah, mine's looking good. 
uh, and then three and three quarters. So now you have two more crinkly panels to add to pocket C. And then you have this strip, you can put it in B. And now we can swap out our trimmer for our score pal. We had that whole pile of papers we'd set aside. So let's just start from the top and let's get these little rectangles scored. It's nice and easy. If you're new to the score pal, I'll uh, just make sure your paper is flush, like level at the top. You're gonna place it in horizontally or the long way, like the horizon. I'm not using the plastic uh, bone folder that comes with this. I'm using uh, a metal tipped stylus. I do carry these in a set. I use the largest ball tip and I'm going to score at five. Now when I score, I hold the scoring tool like a pencil. And the amount of pressure required is dependent on the, the thickness or heaviness of the paper. This is pr pretty heavy duty paper, so make sure you push with a firm hand. And if needed, you can make multiple passes. I'm gonna repeat that same scoring on the remaining three pieces of this. So every, every time it's horizontal and at five inches, okay? And all of this goes in pocket C. Next, I'm gonna take the pieces that measure four and a half by nine and a quarter. Kind of a weird measurement for a card base, but trust me, it's all gonna work out. We're gonna score this one at six and a quarter. So if you look on here, it's kind of nice when you have those, num those quarter numbers, it's pretty clear what number it is. And I'm continuing to apply a generous amount of pressure so that um, I get a nice score line on this. And again, you can do that in multiple passes if you just don't have enough hand strength. Place all of these in pocket C. Now we're moving on to this huge piece of paper here. This is 12 inches wide by six and a quarter inches tall. So I want it in there horizontally again. And this time we'll score at four and a quarter. So that has a little asterisk on it on my score pal and eight and three quarters, that's way over here. Okay, and we have to repeat that for the remaining pieces. So again, four and a quarter, eight and three quarters. Two more, four and a quarter, eight and three quarters. Four and a quarter, eight and three quarters. Now these are gonna be the bases for card set B. So I want you to place them in your um, file. And I usually just do that at an angle because I don't wanna, there's not gonna be enough room for me to shove them down in there. All that's left now would be the single fold card bases. Nice and easy. Notice the print is facing up, goes horizontal into the score pal. We'll score at four and a half. Four and a half. Getting all this prep done ahead of time will make your card making so much more fun and efficient. I know it's a lot of work up front, but so worth it. This is the uh, for basis for card set A, and now I'm ready to make some cards. If you have a copy of the instructions, your visual assembly guide can be found on page three for set A. Again, these are your single fold cards, nice and easy to put together. So obviously everything uh, required for those cards is going to be either in your embellishment pack, uh, the ribbons and and uh, embellishments and so on, and in pocket A. So I'm emptying pocket A. If you want, you can also empty the slim amount of things in D and just have it handy in case you decide you wanna use some of the elements from there. Then what I typically do is organize the pieces by size. So as you added things to the pocket, you may not have been paying attention. I never do, I just put everything in the pocket <laughs> and don't worry about it, right? So I've got these little strips, panels, strips in two sizes, and outer sentiments, my card bases. So take the card base, and it does have a bump and an indentation from your scoring process. So find the, the side that has the bump on it, and that's what's gonna go on the inside of your card base. Remember, bury the bump of the score line inside the fold. Bury the bump, just a nice, easy way to remember. I know um, when I first started making cards, I thought the opposite was true, and I was lovingly corrected by a professional in the uh, paper finishing uh, industry, not even card making, but he, he, uh, he knows his stuff, and he's like, you got it wrong, Trisha. Bump goes on the inside of the score. So it's my mission to help everyone uh, learn the truth about the right way to fold a score. Here we've got green now, where it's just sort of deal out our card bases. Then the rose, the print, 
and the ivory, okay? Now from our stack of organized items, I'm gonna start with the largest, the large panels, and let's put a white or ivory panel onto this first green card. Then we'll go to the print. Next, let's, let's pop this print with green. And this is actually gonna be a vertical card, so I'm gonna make it vertical just so that we're clear. That'll be green, and then this one will be rose. All right, now we get it, we're gonna identify the widest border strips. Let's take the rose, the green. So all we're doing now is distributing color, okay? So does it have to be these colors? No, ivory in print. I assembled the vertical a little differently than the horizontal just because I liked it. <laughs> so I, this is, you know, follow your own creative muse, but notice how these border strips nest so nicely. Now, when I got here, I put the, kind of put it next to, same here. I didn't want to cover that cute little print. All right, now we have some sentiments that we can distribute. How about there's no place like home for the holidays? And then why are Dasher and Dancer always taking coffee breaks? Now we have the inner sentiments, so we'll add Merry Christmas to you and your Nomi's on both of these. Now for the vertical ones, we actually have a nesting panel for the inner sentiment, which is kind of nice. I like that. From the craft color tags, you should be able to pop out a little Santa hat. And we're gonna add the Santa hat adorably to, just for two of these, to the inner image of this set A card here. <laughs> it's so cute. Now we are gonna just, these get all get assembled uh, quite similarly. So let's just take the envelopes and I love these super smooth ivory envelopes. You just know they're extra special when you touch them. They're so luxurious. I don't know, is that a word to describe paper? In my book it is. <laughs> I love luxurious ivory super smooth envelopes. And this is so nicely straightforward. I know with the holidays, you don't always wanna have a complicated card assembly, right? So I'm measuring off some of this rose colored satin ribbon and I'll trim off a piece that's a little wider than my nesting panels here. And I'm gonna grab some adhesive and I'll just run some along this printed panel and nest it right onto the rose colored mate for that panel. Then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing here with the rose colored paper, but this time I think I'm gonna use my grid ruler just to help me make sure that I stay level because I tend to you know, glue things on. So now I have my ruler has a solid line forming two cubes. I'm gonna rest that against the bottom edge of the ivory panel and then rest the straight edge of this piece onto the ruler's edge and that way I know it's nice and level. I'll grab my tape dispenser. I always like to work with a, like an office style tape dispenser because it acts as a third hand for me. And then when I wrap the ribbon around this card, I'm gonna make sure that the ribbon wants to wrap in the direction I'm asking it to wrap. It definitely has a grain type situation. I'll center the ribbon just below the top edge of the printed panel, bring the ends around to the back. I already have my tape dispensed and secure those ends on the back. Next, I'll take my adhesive again and carefully center that onto the card base. Now, if you happen to have some foam adhesive circles, I typically uh, cut these in half because I frugal like that. And I'll take my uh, square sentiment here and I'm gonna add the, the halves to the outer edges, outer corners rather, and then like maybe two more in the middle. And then because I cut through the little pull tab, I have an easy way of removing the backing from every single tab here, relatively efficiently. And I like how thin these are. I mean, they give you a little bit of a pop, but not too much for like, you know, sending cards in the mail purposes. Lovely. Next, I can take my, maybe a brown strip from the scrap pile. I'm gonna nest it kind of over my card base here. And that way I know exactly how far to run my adhesive. I'll use my ruler to help me anchor this down. I'm gonna do it again, maybe about 
I'm going to go about a half an inch from the bottom edge and just level that on there. At this point, you can use your trimmer or a nice scissors to trim the end off. That way you're utilized your scrap. Yay, you, right? And now I can add my inner sentiment to the card. And I'm ready to go. One and done. So the other three cards in the set that are in the envelope assemble the same way. So here are the finished versions. So again, this is the second card. It's just like the first one, except I used the print on the inside too. Maybe I could have done that with this, whatever. Here, as I mentioned, I glued the panels onto the card next to each other instead of nested. And then that gave me a little bit of contrast here for this beautiful um, champagne colored ribbon. I stretched the ribbon across and this is totally optional. I made a little three part bow to just add a little something. If you don't wanna go through the time and effort to make that three part bow, by all means, just, just skip it, okay? Um, but if you don't know how to make one, I do have a little ribbon basics video that you can follow along with. And here I have the nicely matted um, piece with the little Santa hat added to that adorable snowman. And then of course the other one, this one I omitted the three part bow. So again, it's your designer preference. The inside is exactly the same. And here you've got four adorable cards ready to send out for the holidays. Let's move on to the next set. As is our custom, we'll empty everything from the B pocket. And yes, it's quite a bit in there. Don't let that scare you. Again, you know, this is just such an efficient way to make cards. Um, and with our sorting system and trimming processes, I've taken a lot of the guesswork out of it. So it really is just a matter of, you know, like when you're doing a puzzle at home and when you dump all the pieces out of the box, the first thing you do, I mean, if you're me, is you find all the edge pieces, right? And this is the equivalent of that process. We've got our little sentiments here, our little crinkle paper. We've got our neutrals and our tinies, okay. And as is usual, we'll start with our card bases. Just take a moment then. Um, you can see that there are two bumps on my score line. So there's a bump that has a wide flap. And then this one will create a narrow flap. So as you're folding these, I want you to make sure that the bumps on the inside of the fold and that the narrow flap is on top. As you can see here, I'm folding and just creasing the paper with the tip of my finger gently. And um, I'm always making sure too that the paper is level when I make the crease. Don't trust your score lines implicitly. Then I can stack all of these up and burnish all of those folds kind of at the same time. You can do it from one side and then do it from the other. And that just, that's a big time saver. Okay, so here we go. We'll start with ivory here, then brown. These will all be vertical, that rose color and the print. Then I'm gonna just reach for the largest size panel. This panel is designed to nest perfectly onto the inner flap of the card. So add the rose colored uh, panel to that one, and then the ivory, then the print and the green. And there should be more panels that are tall. They match the same height as the other panels. So we'll start out with green. Again, distributing the color and the print. This fits on the outer flap, right? The ivory and the red. Then you have a set of smaller panels. Some are larger, right? I'm gonna take the larger and we'll distribute print, rose, brown, ivory. Now these we only have two colors, so we didn't have as many options here. We'll go brown, green, green, brown. Now remember those little printed panels from the cut aparts? Those go next. And then we have our fun little craft tags. Those go next. One, two, three, four. Now we have our little <laughs> really tiny sentiments Noel and Noel and Christmas cheer, Christmas cheer. Then we'll do the inner sentiment, marry everything in a happy always on the top two, and then may your day be merry and bright on the bottom two. On the top two, I used this cute little snowman on the inner 
on the first flap, the right flap of the card, which you can't really see. Oh, and then from this D pile, I also used this stripe on the first card. I used the light colored gift box here, the darker one here with the black bow, and the red gift on this one. Now, is that required? Absolutely not, totally optional. It's totally up to you if you wanna do that. And I used a few other scraps as well, and I'll explain how I did that in our card that we'll assemble together. So let's just take card four, grab our super smooth, beautiful ivory envelopes, and set aside these three, and then we'll make this one together. One of the first things we can get out of the way is the addition of our nesting panels, the largest ones. So I'll add my adhesive to this narrower panel that, that will go on the short flap of the card. And then this one will go on the larger inner flap. You know, this was nice because it was just a 12 by 12. It was a six and a quarter by 12 inch piece. And I sized it so that there would be this little margin right here. So it doesn't, this edge doesn't run into that edge. Yet the base of the card will perfectly fit into the envelope. We can go ahead to and maybe nest the brown onto the print. I hate to cover the print, but it's just, just how it went. And then the little print here onto the brown. If you want, you can use your ruler. It's gonna be a two cube reveal, I believe. Yes, two cubes. Anything greater than one cube, I like to have a ruler helping me make sure it's nice and level. Okay, now you have an option here with this cute little tag. We have the, um, the crinkle paper here. So what you can do, again, if you want, is you can take a piece of this crinkle paper and put it behind the hat. To do that, I took some book binding glue and just put it around the perimeter and added the crinkle paper to the tag Looks like I went past my margin a little bit here, but that's okay. That way you have a little texture in that cute little opening. The other thing you can do is a little ribbon trick, okay? So I have this beautiful rose-colored ribbon, and I'm going to cut a small length of it, grab some tape, make sure I know which way the ribbon wants to bend, and take the, the pointy end that I trimmed to get it through the eye of the tag here. Bring that around to the back and just secure it with tape. Next, take the same ribbon you just added. You could do a different one if you wanted to, and I'm making a tiny little knot, just a single knot. And you can trim at an angle, however you like. Now what I like to do is take a glue line and just add it to my tag right beneath the the opening here and if you want you can even shove a little bit of it up at the center to skinny it up a little bit and now I add my bow to the bow <laughs> it looks like I did it with one piece but I really did it with two so it's the ultimate bow fake out now I can go ahead and center this I'm just going to kind of pay attention to the bottom left and right margin Now in the finished sample, you may notice that this piece is matted with red. Well, let's talk about that. We have this little scrap from the D pocket. So because you're watching the video, you're getting this bonus tip. I'm taking my grid ruler here and I see that the size of the snowball piece is one and a quarter by one and a half. Okay, that's the case. What if I trim this an eighth of an inch larger? So that would be one and three eighths by one and five eighths. I'm gonna do that. I did it for both pieces <laughs> for my next card too. Now that gives me a really tiny reveal. It's gonna be a 16th of an inch, which I love. So again, I trimmed the red scrap to one and three eighths by one and five eighths. And um, so it is helpful if you start as a card maker to master not only your quarters, halves and three quarters, but also your eighths measurements because I really like the subtlety of an eighth inch border. So in order to get that, you need to be one eighth inch larger than the piece you're matting. So knowing those, how those numbers and measurements work can really advance your skills. Then that gets really highlighted in a beautiful way on this panel. Now, 
Let's move this over to our card base. And this panel sits three quarters of an inch from each outside edge of the card. So a three quarters on this ruler is three solid lines from the edge. So it doesn't, I mean, I can try to find the exact center here if I want, but one, two, three solid lines from the edge and centered. Okay, so that's gonna be my, my goal. <laughs> that's exactly placed. I'm gonna flip this over now. So anything past the edge of this uh, seam here shouldn't get any adhesive. If it does, I will glue my card closed into a permanent postcard, right? <laughs> so again, let me just center this up. And I think it's gonna be two and two and three ace here. Yes. Lovely, lovely trifold card. Well, we're not quite done yet. We still have a few more things to do. I'm going to add this little strip to my rose colored panel here on the second flap of the card. And because it's so narrow, I'm going to use glue. But notice I'm just using my panel as a measuring uh, guide. And then I can add this here. I forgot this panel does run past. So I'm just going to use my craft knife to remove the excess. Perfect. Many, many, many moons ago, I picked up a postage edged decorative scissors. I don't even know if they sell decorative scissors anymore, but I was feeling like making a little postage stamp out of him. Isn't that cute? If you happen to have one in the archives, uh, pick one up. This one was by Fiskers and it's called, that's Paper Edgers and this, the name of it is Stamp. Again, I have no idea if this is still on the market. I just thought it was nifty and I had it in my stash. And I think anytime you use something you've had in your stash for 20 plus years, that is a win. <laughs> okay, now let's open this card and I wanna show you some things you can do to, to zhuzh up the inside. Now earlier in set A, we used a seven inch portion of this 12 inch strip and now I have this left. So I took scissors and just made a little V cut there and I'll add this to, to rest at the top edge of my card here on the inside and I did also I have I happen to have this other scrap of red here so I'm going to kind of do the same thing here cut a little V into it I know some of you use like tools or different things, special things to create those little V's, but I just kind of eyeball it. Now here we have this cute little gift. I will do kind of a fussy cut, but not too fussy around the little bow here. I'm going to leave some white space. That'll be fine. Because the card base is ivory at this spot as well. And I'll add some adhesive to him. And this is now serves as an anchor for my gift. The brown strip in the middle serves as the anchor for my sentiment. And it got a lot of wonderful happenings on the inside of the card. I also want to tell you the strategy behind three cards of this size, or three sets of cards all in the same size of four and a half by six and a quarter, allows you to put a four by six family photo that you just print at your photo developer without having to pay those extra four by eight expensive charges. A four by six photo of the family will fit right in here and you can save a lot of money on your holiday photos. And I, I don't know about you, but I love to have a photo included in my um, card. I love to receive them that way as well. And we even have a digital version of this, a template that you can drop your family photo into a digital card of the same theme to match your cards. How cool is that? So go ahead and complete the remaining three cards in the set in the same fashion. I'll give you a quick peek at mine. Here we have the second one again with that texture peeking through the same matting and the little knot there. Here we have the gingerbread man with just a simple white strip in the middle and the matching pair. This one I actually made a whole bow instead of just a knot, so you can do it any way you like. Sometimes people don't like to have a, lar a knot that large, whereas I think these knots might be a little bit smaller. I don't know. Designer's choice, as always. Let's move on to our final set. I'll take everything out of pocket C. Just get my puzzle organized here. Wow, we got a lot of pieces to the puzzle, but not too bad to sort. 
all kinds of sentiments here. We got our crinkly paper. So our big, these are pretty big. It kind of reminds me of when you have a deck of cards and you collect them and you have to sort of face them all correctly. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so we've got our card bases. And of course, you can see already when we fold them in half, they're only going to go about halfway across the card. And I'll do that same kind of a thing where I finger press just to get the initial fold. Remember, you're going to bury the bump. And then I'll stack and give them a little once over. Okay, we also have a set of these other strips that are also scored. Remember doing that? So we need to I'll finger press again all four of these. And then give it a once over. All right, let's distribute now for our deal. Let's go green and green and then brown and brown. We have a lot of nice things to hand out here. Then we're going to alternate the colors. We'll go brown, brown for our flaps. I'm just not putting them down on the right, just kind of that's a future destination for those. Each card will get a rose colored panel. That worked out really nice with distributing some, some variety. And now we have a ton of panels here. Let's go with our largest, four largest panels, rose, print, ivory, and brown. Then I want you to find the slightly smallest sentiments. They're pretty close in size, but this you should be able to recognize them easily. Merry Christmas from our home to yours will be here. And then holiday wishes will be here. Each card will receive one crinkled paper. And then if you look at your panels, you've got some slightly smaller panels and slightly larger. Let's look at the smaller ones, okay? Ignore the larger ones. Smaller panel here, brown, rose, print, and ivory. Lastly, you've got these larger plain panels. Let's go rose, brown, ivory, and print. Then your final inner sentiment. May the year ahead... May the year ahead, may the simple joys, may the simple joys. There you have all of the pieces. It was a lot of pieces. But again, isn't it fun to have everything trimmed up and ready to roll so that all you have to do is just sit and enjoy the process of assembling your card. So the, the concentration part is kind of where I'm your guide. And then you can sit back and relax, maybe watch a holiday movie while you assemble the cards. And I think that's just a cool concept. I hope you agree. All right, here we are. This, this is kind of an important step here, okay? Before you start adding this, this rose-colored panel, let's just get the important uh, order of steps done here. Take that um, brown piece for the first card here and hang it on the right edge of your rose-colored panel. So it's like right up to the edge and then it's centered from top to bottom. Flip it over, and if you want to wing out that little tab, you can just add a little adhesive just to make sure it's secure. Then you can add your adhesive to the panel. Open the card so that the flap is on the left on your green card base, and then center this so that the brown flap is on the right. So you have one flap on the left, and that one flap on the right will overlap with it, okay? Now, if we want, we can finish what's happening here. You're gonna have another panel. No matter what card you're working with, it'll be the same height as this flap. And I'm gonna go ahead and add it to the inner left flap as well. And then the May the Year Ahead, we can add our inner sentiment if you like to. So I'll just place that. Now you can add it here or here. I'm gonna go here. Up to you. Designer's choice. <laughs> now on the outside, we are going to do a little bit of nesting. First, I guess let's add our, our sentiment to the panel. And then the nested sentiment onto that 
outside of that narrow flap. So our card really took shape quickly, didn't it? I mean, that's looking great. Now we just have these last two panels left. We got the crinkle and we've got the brown. So I'll nest the crinkle onto the brown. Find your twine and let's cut two pieces that are a little longer than the height, the longest uh, size of that panel. We'll, we'll have a lot of extra, so don't worry about it, but we're just gonna start there. Now, remember we had those uh, charms in the kit. These are nice and flat. I just try to pick charms that don't have too much dimension. If you'd rather not mess around with the charms, that's fine. Just leave them off or use them for another project. And I'm going to fold the twine in half and try to get a nice little pointy loop there that I can send through the hanging hole on the charm. And I'm going to pull that loop through, bring the ends through the loop so that it's hooked on. Okay. Repeat with the other side. So I'll just fold this in half again. I'll send it through the hole. Oh, my first try and everything. <laughs> Didn't go like that when I was making these in the first place. <laughs> Okay, so now I have my star, and you can decide where you want your star to be. I wanted mine to be like, not in the middle, but you know, up higher where the star would be, right, in the sky. And I'll separate my ends. I'll kind of split them out a little bit. And prep, because again, as I mentioned, I keep my tape in a dispenser, so I have a third hand. That works out really nice. I'll just tape this on the back. And then Split the ends on the other side here. Oh, isn't that just the sweetest? Bring that around to the back. Make sure I have enough tension there. Tape. And I do have a little extra. I'll remove that. So it's not bulky. Oh, that's so cute. I'll add my adhesive to the back. And add this to the flap. And now I have this adorable card. Merry Christmas from our home to yours. And you know, if you wanted to, you could add, you know, you could trim this and add something, add it here, you know. Again, you do have a few other things left, not many though. I think we did a really good job of using everything that came in that box, didn't we? So that's the one we made together. And then this is the second one. Oh, I forgot to mention. The, the rest of the Santa hat goes inside of this one here, okay? So that's the first two cards in the set have the Santa hat from the craft tag. And then again, a nice simple look here for the other one. That print adds a lot too, don't you agree? I just, I love all of this. These cards are so darling. So go ahead and get a head start on these cards. Um, some of you I know buy multiple kits, make, you get, 12 cards out of every kit plus you'll have a lot of fun while you're doing it so thank you so much for joining me for this workshop if you like that gnome for christmas uh, style be sure to pick up our page kit i have a video i've already filmed and edited it and uploaded it the instructions are done so come and make those eight 12 by 12 layouts with me and i wish you and your family a very happy and creative christmas holiday and uh, don't forget to hit like subscribe and maybe even think about a club scrap membership if you're not already a member of our club we'd love to have you as a part of our family look forward to seeing you again soon in our next workshop thanks for joining me